Time for something new. See, if you folks want more, a list of awesome mons that have been released in the past month, then is August 2023 at the time of writing, by the by. Why did I want to do this? Well, for starters, because sometimes it's hard to make a list of mods without making repeats. And two, ever since starting to do Rimmel content, I've noticed new modders showing up and adding to this awesome game. Think of this as a way to alert people to new mods to try out, and of course, give them some props to some new blood, of course. Without further ado, let me know in the comments if you knew about these mods, and of course, if you want to see more of this as a series. Starting off, the obvious literal game changer, the one and the only vehicle framework. No joke, this framework has been an ongoing project for some time, and finally, we get to play around with it. Going Mad Max on Raiders or just bringing on the tanks, because everything's better with tanks. I suppose we could make mention of VE vehicles, but that should go without saying that anything Vanilla Expanded gets a place on this list. One entry spot, though. Just one. Throughout the month, I have seen multiple differences, tanks, vehicles, and other items from this framework, and I can't wait to see what other fun tools of war we get to drive around with in the future. For this next one, slightly cheating, but the Grimm's World 40k mods released this August, are a great package for those who are our fans of the 40k universe. Armors, arms, corpse, starch, and tanks, lots of tanks. And people in armor as heavy as tanks, of course. I think what I like best about these mods is the fact that the arm style is very rimworld, doesn't feel out of place, feels just right, really. Plus, hey, any excuse to fight for the Imperium is always a good excuse. I can't wait to see more from this team. Maybe get us some Mechanicus for the next one. Mechanicus? Mechanus. Oh man, I'm gonna get killed for that one. Speaking of gods, how about some godly traits for your pawns? I know, I know, overpowered and whatnot, yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, sometimes you want to have that super OP run where you want to cause trouble and make it everyone else's problem, okay? And look at that. Despite this being a first-time mod from the creator, it actually has a bit of balance. In the sense, they are extremely rare, like one in a million rare. Plus, it comes with curses to counterplay, like curses, speed, everything your pawn does is fast, except, you know, moving. For a first time mod, actually a pretty good set of uh, traits for a bit of OP fun. I, I really, yeah. And for a bit more fun, the Bong Stick. A legendary name, meme, weapon, whatever you want to call it. That is only found by quest or trade. Able to take down many foes. Yes, it's it's just a stick, but a very memeable one. Plus, it can apply a sedative effect on whoever it hits. So, it actually does something while being funny. To be fair, my baseball bat has a sedative effect as well. Would you like to test it? <laughs> Okay, okay, for something a little more serious, how about talking about the world of, uh, um, uh, Naruto? Yes. No, not the anime, the actual mod named this. Looking at this mod, I admit, I had an eyebrow raise. I thought it would be a list of a bunch of, uh, ninja-themed weapons and armor, and we call it good. But no, this mod goes a bit above and beyond. Yes, first off, it includes a chakra system. Pawns with the chakra trait can learn the different ninjutsu, genjutsu, taijutsu, similar to the psychastry system. This alone would make me want to talk about this mod, but guess what? There's more. There are the five elemental releases, those being earth, wind, fire, water, and lightning, you know, which can be given to a pawn via genes or through chakra, special ninja chakra paper made at the, the art bench as a writer right now. Then, of course, the Keke Genkai. Oh, unique bloodline abilities pawns can be born with. These all can be passed down through breeding naturally. The Empire will provide you ninja rings, giving custom rewards. And of course, there is the many ninja weapons and armor. Like I said before, didn't I think much of this, but this is an actually well-made mod, and I can't wait to see more since the mod devs are working on more. Yeah, I know, right? Keep an eye on this one. I know, I'll be doing that, believe it. Hex Percepts is next, and what you might guess is that this is a mod that adds more precepts for your colony ideology. Always nice to mix it up and have new ways to direct your colony. So the precepts here come in two flavors, simplistic and complex. Both balanced for base game from what I can tell. There is the absolute animalism to focus on animal work like taming, 
pawn chances, and even caravan riding speeds. Charisma for making your pawns suave and great at talking. Not so good at research, but hey, just use your talking powers to recruit someone else who can research for you. Bingo. Desert living is for those who want to live out in hotter environments, raising minimum and max temperature tolerance, and even insulation boosting versus heat. Could be generally or genuinely useful. Who knows? Especially early game. Ignorance is bliss for happy pawns, but not so for smart ones, with knowledge seekers focusing on research at the detriment of other focuses. Maker culture is building focus, opposing gardening, medical-minded focuses on healing, but you can't make a punch very well. This one amuses me, because you take more damage that you can heal better. Mercantile improves your trading skills, but at the cost of building speed. Might be a fine trade-off. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> And you basically get the idea, a bunch of precepts that focus on improving one part of the game at the cost of another. Pretty fair and balanced and could be useful for certain playthroughs. Highly, highly, highly recommended. So one of my writer's favorite V mods is a nutrient paste expanded one. Honestly, while not my personal favorite, it is up there as one of the more useful mods. Now this month we got two mods, two to go up to the mod. First up being Ferret's NutriChem, a new way to make chem fuel, all by hooking your pace lines to the new device provided. I know the community's been talking about this one a lot, but we gotta talk about it because it's worth it. Given pace, it's pretty easy to make with the mod. This is a low effort way to keep chem fuel stock up for whatever projects you may need. Also, there is a way to just use the biofuel refinery to turn already made pace meals into chem fuel if you want to do that method rather than piping one. Though, the most hilarious thing is the structure to pipe chem fuel and the make new nutrient paste. I have no idea how this works or even if it would improve or worsen the taste, but I imagine it has to give pawns some bad heartburn. You know what I mean? Now second to this, the other mod for paste is the nutrient paste expanded. MPD tears. MPD tears was a mod meant to be expanded on the paste dispensers before being like, you know, continued by Millie. Honestly, a pretty cool mod for its time and combining it with the pipeline feature feels, it really does feel like that's what it needed. With the mod, you get three new tiers of paste you can dispense improved, which makes it an act as a normal meal, right? Pawns don't mind eating it at all. And of course you won't get any food poisoning, which is awesome. It's fine for fine meal variants, great for the weight game and prisoner, which is even worse flavored than normal paste. Obviously used for people who you don't like, or if you want to experiment on your pawns like vault Speaking of, let's see how our vault is doing. So have you ever wanted to play RimWorld where God can destroy you based on his own whims? No, 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 no. I don't mean Randy random. I mean like the ritual to a divine being sense, right? Like with the gods are angry mod, now you have a huge risk versus reward. If you do good, you get a blessing. But if you do bad, oh, that's when it gets full Old Testament with lightning, fire, and possibly a plague or two. Now I know what you are thinking. And yes, my hair is very stylish, but also also, yes, this mod can be tweaked in the mod options if you are worried about certain wrath events being too dangerous. Always a nice thing for modders to provide options for the tweaking, you know? Uh, yeah. Moving up. Repair hubs. Yeah. Fun stuff. These are useful buildings designed to keep repairs up on the base. Set them up, power them up, and you've got a radius of auto repair. Actually, pretty balanced though. Cost and power use, not to mention that it doesn't do it quickly, it's every few seconds. So it's not gonna keep raiders who try to tunnel in out permanently, but it will help fix up things after a fight or perhaps delaying said tunneling enough to let you get there to stop the problem. There are also repair hub belts and implants. Pawns with them have their apparel repaired twice per day, not to match, but again, it helps for the day to day, especially for more rare items you don't want to wear down to nothing. I also like how it looks so vanilla-ish. Always a plus when the modded content can mix with vanilla art styles. Yeah. Now from repairing things to salvaging its ancient junk loot. This is a fun mod because it turns the normally pretty worthless ancient junk dotting the landscape into a potential treasure trove of useful gear. You can find ancient food packs and soda that still taste good and satisfies pawns amongst fridges, vending machines, and shopping carts. Ancient power cells from ancient lamps, which while on their own you can't do much with, but if you research batteries, you can get small ancient power cell blocks that give you 100 power. Great for the early game and other stuff. Or hey, why not turn those cells into a refurbished ancient lamp that glows forever with its own power? 
ancient tanks might drop their tank machine guns, which could be helpful. Again, early on. Uh, uh, emphasis on the helpful. Not to mention the ancient cooking station that can be found amongst old crates and containers. These do require power to work, but use far less power than original, but at less efficiency as a cost. Finally, all junk items can drop other loot, like from silver ATMs. You know, like silver from the ATMs, reinforced barrels from tank cannons, and so on. Seriously useful mod for the early game, and it's nice to be able to utilize the junk in a balanced and fun way. Way. I hope to see this more from the dev in the future. I don't know why this isn't base game. It's, it hurts my soul, but we have it fixed, okay? The modders solved our problem. With the subject of reusing items, how about reusing your triple rocket launchers and making yourself a rocket launcher bike? Yeah, the vehicle expanded mod certainly has some fun add-ons. Can't think of a lot of things more fun than a cycle in the shake of a rocket launcher that eats up chem fuel like a Snorlax eats food. Seriously though, this thing will devour all your chem fuel. But for the speed you get, hey, it might be worth it, if only to show off to the trade caravan. <laughs> Or maybe show off to the raiders who inevitably will come over to your base and steal your corn. But know what never made sense? How they could show up without food supplies or medicine. You and I both know if you want to raid, you always bring supplies, especially medicine. Well, with the raider rations mod, it fixes this little oversight by giving raiders a good chance to come with food. So now when you decide to order in to fill your meat locker with fresh meat, you can also get some prepackaged meals to go with that. Nice. Now, if you aren't in it for the meat and more for the free labor, you might realize how clogged your colony bar can be when you have a lot of unpaid interns in the colony. That's why the overworked and super underpaid worker bar is a great add-on. Just install the mod and now you have a simple toggle that flips between your main colonist and the colonist who wear a lot of collars and have no freedoms. Sometimes the best mods are those that are simple quality of life mods, which is why I make so many of those videos. And so do note I pay all my colony workers very well and totally don't send them out on raider missions underprepared the day before payday. Yep, that's a never, not once, never. Nope. Suppose another reason not to just kill off raiders is if they have good genes. However, extracting their genes can be a bit annoying since it takes time and you still have to pay attention to your prison. Thank goodness there is the gene extractor tears mod. Now you got access to improved versions of the gene extract. This time, all you need is to put whoever you want to harvest into the machine. Keep it powered, filled with food, and that's it. Just wait every eight days and you get a new gene pack aside from the normal keep the power on so they don't die. You really don't need to worry about them anymore. Plus, if you have VE nutrient paste, you can hook this up to the paste line and keep them fed. A great mod, especially if you have stuff like alpha genes or mods to add xenotypes. Speaking of, we got lions and tigers, no bears or oh my, sadly, but next mod. Here, we have two new xenotypes based on large felines. The Leos, with good social and hunting skills at the cost of not being generally good at other things. Tigers, meanwhile, are heavyweight solos a bit slower than the other pawns and definitely not the most social, but make up for it with pain tolerance and again, great combat skills. Aside from the genes that govern their looks, they do get specialized genes you will find useful. First, the nine lives gene. This archite gene allows the pawn to dodge a single gun or melee attack. Not gas or explosions though. You also only get nine uses and it takes a month to recharge a use. Still, it's a very nice thing to be able to avoid a potential killing blow, in my own personal opinion. Feline claws are an obvious gene they would have, and with it, their unarmed strikes have armor piercing. Pride Hunter is a gene that gives your feline friends joy in hunting, be it melee or range. They hunt, they love it, they also are naturally stealthy, which in gameplay terms lowers the chance of a hunted animal going mad. I think we all have stories of hunting a buffalo herd and then it all going Matt. Finally, the adrenaline gene, every time they get a kill, they get a buff to their mood filtration. A 10%, oh, blood filtration, oops, 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 a 10% boost that unadmittedly, oh, unlimitedly, stacks. 
Am I all right? Probably. The catch, it all goes away when they go to sleep. All right. The last thing to mention is the mod includes an enemy faction. Makes sense when you got the hunter skills of these xenotypes to want to practice your trade. Careful out there, don't want to be the hunted. With another xenotype mod, we have the Mass Effect xenotypes. Ah, Mass Effect. So many cool alien species, and now we can include them into our RimWorld adventure. Four species are included here, and while you don't need any anything to run this mod aside from biotech, you can include some of the recommended mods on the page to trigger more genes for the xenotype. Figured I should mention that, as for the species, you got Turians, disciplined, militaristic, leadership-type aliens who also are pretty good at doing some collaborations, yes. Oh, calibrations. Is that what it says? Well, they're good at calibrations, I guess. Krogan. These are your living tanks made for fighting, fighting, and more fighting. Anyone who faces one in battle should have a good set of quads to think they can fight them fair. Salarians are your intelligent alien species, short-lived, but during their time in your colony, you can't ask for a better researcher. And then the Batarians, the species with complex social structures, moral issues, and usually found fighting as mercenaries or raiders, round out this set of xenotypes. Do I want more? Yes, I do. These xenotypes look great. Sci-fi mods in general look great, especially by people who, you know, are fans of the source material, especially Especially for our next mod. Hello there. Knights of the Old Republic or KOTOR is amongst some of the best Star Wars games out there. Boy, me and my writer were happy to know there's a set of mods devoted to bringing that setting to the rip. Though in August we got a new piece of that mod set, Star Wars KOTOR gadget and equipment. Like the name implies, you get a bunch of Old Republic to aid your pawns. This on top of the already great weapons and armor mod needed to play with this one. First toys, you get to play with energy shields. Unlike the shields of Rimworld, these are armed mounted ones and are limited use. They act as head if rather than vanilla style shields, so keep that in mind. The good news is that they don't prevent your pawns from firing weapons. Bad news, your opponents can and will use them. They also can be shorted out through MP effects, or worse, ignored by disruptor weapons. From the aforementioned weapons and armor mod, oh yes, things are useful, yes they are. Four belted items, try the stealth belts, turn them on, and your pawns are cloaked. However, the cost for this is that the pawns can't attack, but great for getting into a better position like flanking opponents or perhaps pulling wounded out of a bad situation. If an enemy uses a stealth belt, they can't be manually selected, so keep an eye out for any shimmering out in the jungle. <laughs> we also have a nice variety of jetpacks. Each has their own abilities and quirks, but all share the same quality of not needing fuel. Rather, using a timer so you can save for that right moment to launch. Modular launchers are basically cool wrist launchers with a variety of different choices to use. I personally like shooting missiles out of my wrist, but hey, you do you guys. Droid weaponry is similar to modular launchers, but instead have to be worn by pawns with the bionic arms. I mean, that makes perfect sense as I'm reading this. Like the launcher, you got plenty of choices to work with, of course. Instant use med packs could literally save your life when used on a on. It removes a random wound head up, by the way. Normally it does one, advance two, and three if you use the life support pack. The antidote pack, rather than the original used to remove poison, now removes toxic buildup, which is kind of nice. And like before, raiders can and will use these if they can. Of course. Other things you and your enemies can use are the combat stimulants. Common ones actually are pretty safe, working to emulate what the body can do normally, but the illicit hyper ones are a whole new story. They can and will ruin your pawn for that big effect. Use with caution for sure. Finally, the many belts and gauntlets your pawns can find and equip. They work to give stat bonuses based on what is equipped. What can I say about this mod set? It was awesome. I want to see more from this team. Give us more coach your stuff, please. Okay, this next one, I am completely blown away by this one, by the way. Someone program a snake into RimWorld. Not like a snake, but like the game. No, seriously, install this snake mod and go to the title screen. You now have a snake button. Click it and boom. Now you have a game of snake using the RimWorld engine. This makes me so happy. I legit have no idea how someone did this, but I have to respect them to pull this off. It's like the people who keep figuring out how to play Doom on anything with a screen. It's nuts. It's silly. I love it. Yeah, not 
not much to say. It's Snake, I guess, but it, it goes faster the more points you get and you play it till you crash. You know what I mean? It's it's Snake, okay? Finally, we have the greatest of all mods released in August with zero bias whatsoever. The Nuber Nebulous mod, of course. Yeah, okay, okay. I have to admit it is kind of cheating to include a mod that I commissioned, but come on! I had to include it on the list. A new storyteller, new mechanics and ways to make money and all done by the wonderful work of Oscar and his team. You know what? I'm going to do a full video on this mod. You'll see. You'll all see why this mod belongs here and why I'm totally not crazy. Well, little, little note from the future. Um, uh, we, we won't be making a video on it, but um, because it's in this video. And if you want to like play my mod, you can just like go play it. Yeah. 20 mods, all made by talented people, and it is good to keep seeing new mods keep being put out. As for this video, if it does well, we will do more follow-ups. As always, I'd like to thank all the wonderful Patreons and YouTube members that make content like this possible. We literally could not do it without you. I mean, like literally. Thank you guys a bunch. I'll see you guys in the next one.